Okay. <laughs> I can squeeze in, I guess. Um, okay, so final week, week 10. So I didn't realize we weren't doing certain introductions in our slides, so I'm just gonna quickly go over who I am. My name is Colin, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I go to school in Stevens Tech, right outside of New York, a rising CompSci junior. And so I was told for this, we should talk about a little bit of our challenges that we came across. And so the very first challenge I faced was, in our kind of degree, we can kind of choose what we want to do. I like to do these classes, and that's what I've taken so far. And so obviously the courses I get to take are web development databases. So naturally my project is a website tool that needs to be able to parse the database. So instantly I was like, wow, I don't know what's going on. Like, what do I need to do? So the problems I encountered was how to do anything. How do I make this page? What is an HTML file? I don't know what that is. How do I make text magically appear on websites? How does a website work? What is Docker? What is this running a secure container? I don't know what that means. What's security? Like, why can't I just make a website that everyone can use? I don't know anything about ports. What does this database mean? So everything like about what I did, I had never seen before. And so obviously many challenges came across. Oh yeah, also new language they have to learn naturally. And so solutions is your classic Google and YouTubing, how to connect to a database, you know, how do the passwords work, how to like make the connection go back and forth between your code and a database. Um, second new language, very cool. Um, and even between languages with code, because most websites obviously are code in JavaScript, but like for the tool we use it here, it's Python. So learning how to put those two together, a very wise intern helped me a lot with that, sitting right over there. So very much appreciate him existing here. So let's get into what my tool even does. So I have to do a software defect filter editor or just a way to present information that is a little more intuitive and doesn't look as ugly as just an Excel sheet. And so what it does is it parses the database um, it inputted from tables from ClearQuest. And so what that means is that it dynamically allocates memory from the tables because we want to isolate tables with different tickets of defects by either what they are, like their states, their validators, like whatever. Because if we just have a big table of everything, it's kind of like hard to like look at it and like it gets really hard on the eyes to like know what you need to do, how to edit, whatever, all that. And so <clears throat> obviously that means we need a live database connection where anything you edit on the web tool will automatically reflect on the Postgres. And so how does that work? Like, what does that even mean? So we have a variable called our current table, which is how we are allowed to use multiple different tables and it's not just stuck to one, which is why you don't need to have an upload tool later on, I'll get to that in a minute. So we have a global variable table, deep copy, so it saves between searches. That way, if you ever save the tool, you ever make an edit, you save it, and immediately is able to push that onto the database. And so over here, you have your search request and it runs the SQL code for you, so you don't need to be writing SQL code every time you want to do anything, um, changing tables, making edits. And so it searches by selecting a column to search for uniquity and key phrases within whatever column you choose. And so since it builds it dynamically, it does mean it's like obviously slower than just like, you know, take everything and paste it. So it's going to be, oh, then obviously it introduces linear time to building your table. But I think it's a worthy trade-off by being able to use different amounts of tables, different sizes of tables, you know, like not having to be stuck to this one exact like file path in that case. And so what it means is that like you can probably use a lot of this tool without ever having to actually go into the code and manipulate all the things unless you want to change like something critical like the exact file location of the database. So it works with three filter columns. They're all self-populating, so you don't need to memorize like what's going on. So what that means is like in this column right here, it's gonna look at the database and see what exists and it will populate it with that. So you don't need to memorize the exact spelling of it. So you don't have any conditions list of misspellings that you need to keep track of. And so it comes to the database and says, okay, what exists? Let me give you the options of here and you pick from there. So it's very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, so the table selection, it's a drop down update. So as soon as you pick a table, it'll look through these column names, ID, headline, state, whatever is in there, and it populates it dynamically. So as soon as you pick a table, this dropdown will change on click to be whatever your table has, amount of columns, column names, all that. And so it will match the text block uniquity. So obviously this side will do the same thing. 
And so if you look here, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but this is the database when you run the SQL code up top. So to do all of this, SQL code will give you this search tool. My website will do that with three drop-down menus, which I really thought was like a main goal I wanted with this project was to not have to have a bunch of like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do this. So like just make it super, super simple, super easy for someone to like come in and look at it and be like, okay, what does it do? How do I use it without having to like store like copy files on your laptop. So for example, let's say I had like a dump file. I would always have to have it on my laptop. I have to know what it is. I have to know what it's named. I don't want to do any of that. So it will basically run the SQL code on its own dynamically. So obviously you might be thinking, okay, well then who cares about what my tool does? Like obviously it's easier to use than writing code, but at the end of the day, I can use this database search, right? Well, what changes with that is the functionality of it, which is editing it, obviously. Editing it in SQL code is way worse than you would think for some reason. And so what I do with this tool is you can edit rows. There's a second column of edits buttons on every single column that you have when you search that when you click on it, it will highlight the whole row so you know what you're looking at. And then you can make changes in real time, save it or cancel it, whatever you want to do. So and every time you save, it directly updates in Postgres on real time. You don't need to like go into the database and do anything else. Just the website has the direct access to manually edit the database, which means that the users don't need to edit or create any SQL code whatsoever. And so here's my demo right here. So if we have any of these tables, let's say defects, I want to search by the creator's name, who made it, what I want to do, they all self-populate, so I can pick whatever I want. I don't need to memorize everyone's name and their ID number or whatever. I can just click on Ken, see what he's done. So this is Ken's three security tickets. And I can say, okay, um, let me quickly go into the database so I can show you the real-time update. So right here we have Ken's one ticket. It's validated, it's by him, baseline, whatever. So let's say I'm like, you know what, Kevin, we know, you know what, Ken? I don't want you to have this anymore. I wanna give this to Kevin. I can save it. It will tell you whether it passes or fails. You click okay, and now it's Kevin. You search it again, it's gone. Because I'm searching from Ken, now it's under your name. If you look in the database, if I search again right now, it's Ken, if I update it, now it's Kevin's. That's a space bar, sorry. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, and so what this allows you to do is like, you can say, okay, well, I can look up who it made what tickets, who owns what tickets, I can see how many you have versus other people have. And if I don't like the discrepancy in how many you have or someone else, I can change it, it automatically updates. Um, you can do that with any row as well. So it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be who made it. I can search by, you know, um, states. Like let's say I wanna see all the ones that are like deferred or deleted. I can see all that. Same th process goes, you edit a line, change whatever you want, and then you can search it in the database and updates in real time. But database searching is just so you can verify that it actually works. You don't need to be on it at all. And so how it works between different tables is if you change this, so pay attention to what this dropdown is. Um, you have ID, submit, state, headline, all that. If I change tables, it will update and change to include the new tables. So now there's product descriptors, now there's product descriptor level three, all that. So it's very simple to change tables without having to like break everything and like manually edit SQL line paths. Big part of the tool was just the ease of like usage to it. Anything can be edited, anything can be saved, all that jazz. Um, so why was it designed the way it was? Obviously I keep hitting on it, it's user friendly, very intuitive for not configuring the back end. Because at the end of the day, it is just data that you can see in the database itself. You don't need this tool, it's just for intuition. And also, so you don't even have the copies of files on hand, because I know from the ClearQuest tool, you have to export the data as an Excel file, and then you can look at it, which is gonna be very annoying after doing it millions of times. So future add-ons and goals that I feel like can be part of this project is obviously adding a more interactable UI. So for example, if I wanna say, okay, like I wanna see all the validators together, not just one. I wanna see Kevin's, Nate's, and Josh's, put them all together, maybe color coded somehow, that would all be front end. And then be able to have the feature of adding or removing columns in the database itself. So let's say I want to add secondary validators. I want to be able to have Josh oversee all of his employees' like tickets and so that he can be like, okay, like 
who are you working on, who are you working on, who are you working on, and then do everything that we talked about earlier about changing or editing or whatever he wants to do. So that's pretty much the whole project. It's an amazing first internship, work opportunity-wise and life-wise. Uh, as much as all the horror stories I heard about the strike, I'm very grateful that didn't happen this year. And they were able to sit and look at each other and bother Josiah about everything and anything about Django. <laughs> a lot of unforgettable memories I have the pleasure of documenting. You can ask the other interns what that means. Thank you. Okay.